Thank you. So um, distinguishing attacks from legitimate traffic, authentication traffic at, at scale. Um, so the problem I'm talking about here is online password guessing against a password server. Um, not talking about you know password cracking with GPUs where someone has you know downloaded your hash file and all that kind of stuff. I'm talking about somebody showing up at your authentication server and guessing you know sending re repeatedly um, you know username and passwords. Um, and really, in 2019, really, are we still you know, interested in this problem? Well, yes, we are. And why are we still interested? Well, because we haven't actually solved the problem. We haven't done a great deal on it at all, actually. So most of the, the um, types of approach that you'll see and most of the types of, uh, that, that, that are published or indeed you know, that you can infer what other providers do are stuff, you know, a couple of variants like this. Um, account lockout, which um, is it's an oldie but a goodie, but, um, and it tends to work well against um, depth-first attacks where somebody is targeting uh, I mean a bunch of specific accounts, but does very little against breadth-first um, attacks, which are definitely an issue as you get larger and larger in scale. For, for places like Facebook and Microsoft that have hundreds of millions or, or, or even a billion or two accounts, um, you know, those breadth-first attacks are really um, uh, significant. IP blocking and IP reputation type stuff, yes, we do kind of rely somewhat on things like this, but the, the, we do encounter attackers who have tens of millions of IP addresses and more importantly, IP address pools that are not um, disconnected from your, your legitimate population. So you will have traffic that's coming from IPs where there's both good and bad mixed in. What about, I mean, you know, instead of using these kind of, you know, ridiculous heuristics and age-old stuff, I mean, hasn't machine learning made, you know, this stuff go away by now? I mean, unfortunately, a great difficulty in applying machine learning to a problem like this is this is an inherently an unsupervised problem. We don't have any labels and we really can't get any. And this isn't, isn't really just a question of resources. It's, you know, what we get um, is, you know, when a browser makes a connection, you have an IP address, a timestamp, some browser information, some, you know, maybe, you know, whether JavaScript and cookies and stuff are enabled, but that's all you get. And there's really no basis. It doesn't matter how many mechanical turkers or human beings you, you put at it. There's really no basis to say, tell me whether this connection, you know, was a, what was, was a good one or a bad one from, from an attacker. So, okay, that doesn't work. So what do I want? I mean, what I want is basically to calculate, given a connection, what is the probability that this is an attack rather than a legitimate account, given my observations X. And X is going to be stuff like, well, obviously it contains the username and password, there's time, there's IP address, user agent, browser information, and maybe all sorts of other stuff, you know, like um, uh, whether I think it's behind a proxy, whether, you know, the, um, uh, whether JavaScript is enabled on the browser, stuff like that. My, my goals here, what I really want in a solution, My, where, where, um, I got it, got it. my goal in the solution here, I mean, I really want to make minimal assumptions about the attack traffic. I mean, it's very tempting to say, you know, you eyeball the data and you say, oh, look, here's a million, you know, different connections and they're all coming from, you know, user agent, you know, Firefox 44 or something like that. Well, the problem with, with, with approaches like that is most of the features that I have here are really not inherently difficult for the bad guy to, uh, bad guy to alter. If you notice that there's a whole bunch of bad traffic coming on, on Chrome 44, you know, all he does is he changes his config file two hours later, he's back in action, you really, you can filter on it, but you don't really accomplish very much. And I really want kind of not to have this unscalable, unmaintainable, unmaintainable mess of trying to eyeball um, attack, uh, attack patterns. My, my goal really is to make as few assumptions as possible, and in particular to make as few assumptions as possible about attack traffic. I think, you know, the um, clean traffic tends to be, you know, much more, um, uh, you know, making generalizations about it tend to be much more um, unstable. Okay, so back to the, the drawing board. So what do we want to do? Um, I've got, as I say, you know, good traffic, bad traffic coming in. And what, what I get is my observed traffic is some mix of clean stuff and attack stuff. It's alpha times clean, plus one minus alpha stuff times abuse. Problem is, I don't know the, the distribution of clean, I don't know the distribution of abuse, and I don't know what alpha is. Alpha is a constant. Okay, but, you know, I've got so basically three unknowns. Alpha, which is the, the, the fraction of the, that is good, the clean and, and, and the, the, the abuse. So three unknowns, and I'm gonna just rewrite and get the, the, the logs ratio. With, with three unknowns, I kind of write one of them in terms of the other two. So the odds that something is, is and this is just, you know, uh, this is just Bayes and, and algebra and moving stuff around, the probability, I mean, the, the, the odds that something is abusive, given my observation, is just, c w with some manipulation, is just this thing down on the bottom here. It's observed minus alpha clean, blah, 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 some other terms. The point to notice on this bottom line is, I mean, I've taken a, 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 the abusive um, s stuff out and I've represented it in terms of um, observed and clean. So if I knew alpha 
and I knew clean, I can get the odds ratio that anything, um, that anything in, in particular thing is um, malicious. Okay, well, so far, so good. I mean, if I knew the right answer, I would just write it down. But, um, so three observations that I'm gonna use to try to, um, um, you know, uh, tease this problem apart is, you know, one, the clean, the, the distribution of the features that I'm interested in, I think is, is stationary, uh, is somewhat stationary over time. That is to say, the percent of users, for example, that use Firefox as opposed to Chrome, or Edge as opposed to either of them, tends to be stable day after day, week after week. It changes, but it changes some and it changes slowly. Whereas the attack traffic can change very discontinuously. Second, um, as I said, if I knew alpha and I knew clean, then I could just, then I can solve the problem. But I think it's even better, actually. All I really need is alpha, because if I get alpha, if I know the percent of um, traffic in a particular block that is, um, um, that is attack traffic, I can then solve the problem. Because suppose, suppose I have a way of estimating alpha over a particular subset of traffic. Well, observed is equal to alpha clean plus one minus alpha. If I can find a block where I, if I can measure alpha, and if I can find a block where alpha is approximately equal to one, then it just means it's clean and unattacked, and I get the observed, I get the clean distribution just by looking at the right observation. And so, th and more on that later. And then the third observation is, for the problems we're interested in here, I mean, fortunately, we and several other pro service providers, we have a lot of data. I'm gonna be looking for subsets of the data where it's relatively unattacked and I can find the clean distribution. But those can be very small subsets. If we get on the order of a billion authentication events per day, and that's not unrealistic for top tier providers, you know, 1% of 1% of a billion per day, you add it up for three weeks and you've got, you know, on the order of 100 million. So with a very small slice of traffic, if I can find, identify a clean subset, I have more than enough data to get very tight confidence intervals on the distributions that I'm interested in. Okay, so to business. Well, as I said, if I, um, what I wanted to do is be able to find subsets that are, um, that are, uh, are more clean than, um, than abusive. If only I had some feature that, that discriminated well, that I could measure, that discriminated well between the clean stuff and the bad stuff. Well, actually, I have such a measure. What I'm talking about here is a guy who's guessing passwords. The good people, you know, here's the, the distribution of succeeds versus fails in the legitimate traffic, you know, um, and here it is in attack traffic. Well, good people succeed and fail, but they succeed almost all of the time, right? They fail only because of typos and things like that, so they fail maybe 5% of time. The attacker has the disadvantage that he doesn't know the password. He fails 99% of the time at least. So everything I see, every block of data is a mixture of these two distributions. So for example, suppose I look at um, Firefox 44 data and it's 10% fails. And then I look at Firefox 45 and it's 50% fails. Does that imply that people who use Firefox 45 are that much clumsier than those who use Firefox 44? No, it means that there's an attacker who's pouring in data and failing at a much higher rate. In all likelihood, the, um, the, the, the legitimate fail rate is gonna be the same for both of those. Um, for both of those. And that's what, I'm going to, that's what I'm going to use, this discriminating feature to identify how much of the traffic in any given block is malicious. I'm gonna use that to find the blocks that are clean. I'm gonna use those to estimate the clean distribution of the other features, and then I'm gonna plug it in, calculate the likelihood ratio, and I'm done. Just putting that a tiny bit more formally, this is basically what I showed you graphically on the last slide. So just look at in any, you know, over your whole set of data or over subsets of your data, the ratio of the fails to the logins. You get all, all these events, some of them succeed because the password is correct and some of them fail. Your failures, F is equal to the benign fails plus the malicious fails. Your logins are the benign um, plus the malicious. Okay, so just, just you know, uh, fails over logins with, um, and here's where the, the, I'm gonna use the assumption that I showed on the last slide. I'm gonna assume that, well, most of my logins are going to be due to benign stuff, right? If, unless 99% you know, percent plus of my logins are actually from the good guys, I'm really not offering a very good service. That is, even if 50% of my traffic is bad traffic, given that he succeeds far less than 1% of the time, there's going to be a tiny amount of um, um, successful, um, successful malicious guessing logins. So this gives us a simplification here where you fail over logins, you write it down, blah, 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 teeny bit of algebra, and it simplifies to um, benign, benign fails over benign logins plus um, malicious fails over benign logins. The reason this is significant is that benign fails over benign logins should be a constant. That is to say, 
you know, benign users, they fail, let's say it's 5% or 6%. Well, it's going to be the same today, tomorrow, yesterday. It's going to be the same for Firefox users as Chrome users. It's going to be... Um, so if I could find that constant, if I can find that constant, I now pretty much have everything that I, um, that I need to, to solve the problem. Let me just give you graphically uh, what I'm talking about here. Again, the assumptions are um, that, that, that the, the, the bad guy fails most of the time. And I claim that the... The, your fail over login ratio for any particular subset of data is a constant determined by the benign traffic, and then this other term, which is determined by how much of your traffic is malicious. Here's a graph from a, a reasonable sized service provider over three months of data, and it's the fail over login ratio of, um, um, uh, you know, of traffic coming in. You know, it's constant plus this the other term. Well, the bad guy he can increase the, the fail over login ratio. He can never decrease it. So whatever this value C is, it has to be baselined below the, you know, the, the minimum of this curve. And when you look at this curve, it's wandering along in time, and it's 10% you know, and it drops down to like 8% or 7 at some point, and then it shoots up to 30. Well, why did people suddenly become more clumsy here at the end of the year? Well, no, that's just, that's just the attack traffic. What you're seeing here, the volatility is all due to attack, is all due to attack traffic. So, um, okay, so if we knew C, and C has to be, C is upper bounded by the, 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 lowest, the lowest value that we saw that curve get, then just some more algebra. If we knew C, we finally get this one minus alpha over alpha, that is the ratio of bad traffic to good traffic in any given block that I'm interested in. Okay, so if I can measure, remember we said at the start, um, I wanted the likelihood ratio, which was, and to get that I needed clean and alpha, and now I've figured out a way of getting alpha, um, I, can estimate, I can estimate that abuse ratio. So I can estimate that globally over my whole data set, but I can also do it over subsets. I can also look at, say, how much of the, um, the data on, um, let's say, Firefox 44 is bad? How much of the data on, on Chrome 37 is bad? How much of the data from this ASN or this metro region is bad? Um, so, uh, you know, my observed is equal to alpha clean plus one minus alpha abuse. If we know C, then we know how to calculate one minus alpha over alpha, that is the ratio of bad, uh, of bad to good. If I can find a subset where this is very low, then I found an unattacked subset or a very little attacked subset, which allows me to uh, say that the observed traffic is actually telling me the clean distribution. Okay, so how do we, so the, so the last teeny little thing is how do we find, how do we find this C? Well, I mean, as a thought experiment, let's suppose, you know, once a year, attackers took a day off. On the Feast of St. Mallory, they all go to the beach or something, and they do something else, and there's no attack traffic. Well, then I would just get the clean distribution and read it off. But I don't, I don't need that. I mean, if I, can, if I can identify any unattacked block of time or block of IP addresses or block of accounts or block of user agents, then I can make the same, um, uh, the same identity that observed is equal to clean. So, for example, you know, I've got... Um, all sorts of people coming in with all sorts of browsers, and there's, you know, 50 different versions of Chrome, and there's 20 different versions of Firefox, and Edge, and IE, and Safari, and everything else. Just suppose, just suppose that for some reason, you've got all sorts of attackers sending all sorts of stuff. But no one, everyone tries to send with the most recent versions of Chrome and, and, and Firefox, or whatever. No bad guy bothers to send um, uh, traffic on, let's say, Firefox 39. Well, thank you very much. That just gave me the clean distribution for all the other features that I'm interested in, for example, you know, time and IP and, uh, uh, and everything else. And, and second, um, you know, so you, you'll, um, you'll know it when you see it. As I said, the, the fail over login ratio is a constant plus this determined by benign plus this vo volatile term that is um, due to attack traffic. If you graph, if you graph this over segments um, um, over time, um, this is what it looks like when you found something really clean. You get, it's just a constant, you know, day after day. If this, this is, for example, if Firefox 39 was unattacked, and this is the fail to login ratio of this thing tracked over 100 days. That's what it looks like if you have, um, if you have, you know, um, uh, you know, 5% or so uh, attack traffic. This is what, what it looks like if you've got, in other words, um, you know, when it looks really clean and really constant and really persistent over time, it's a second clue in addition to the, the, the upper bounding thing that, um, um, that, you've actually found, that you've actually found clean. So the, the overall algorithm then is extremely simple. I mean, I just break my data into K subsets, which are 
the categorical buckets of the, the features that I'm interested in, for example, browser and major version, for example, metro regions, for example, whether cookies are enabled or not, and stuff like that. And then I take C, my, C which again is the, um, the ratio of um, fails to logins in benign traffic, that's something I'm trying to estimate, is the min across all of these buckets um, over, over whatever you know, period of time that I've got to, got to observe. And then my clean, my estimate of the other features, is equal to the observed traffic just in whatever bucket I found that gives me my, my um, estimate of minimum C. And now, to calculate the likelihood ratio for everything, given any um, observation that comes in, for each of my observation buckets, I calculate the ratio of bad traffic to good, that's one minus alpha over alpha, is just, and this is these terms here, F and L are just, that's the number of fails in this bucket, L is the number of logins in this bucket. These are all things that I observe directly, and the C thing that, um, that I've just estimated. And then the likelihood ratio um, is again in terms of observed and clean, which I just estimated above. So everything here, the entire likelihood ratio, the odds of being malicious, is now represented in terms of stuff that, I, that I've estimated. And the estimates here are, the, you know, um, the main thing that pulls it apart is this, this constant, which is the, the, the fail over login ratio in the benign traffic. That's something that should be pretty constant. If it varies, it varies very slowly. So once you lock it in, it should be month after month, it should be telling you what's good. And the clean traffic, say the distribution of browser versions and stuff like that, will change somewhat, but, um, but, but will also change um, somewhat slowly. Um, when you're estimating stuff, you're never gonna get it precisely right, but um, um, this is actually, the, the, your, your, um, your estimates end up being you know, fairly, um, robust, so this is kind of a sensitivity analysis which said, okay, suppose that the actual um, benign failure rate was 7% and we overestimated it by about, by about 5%, and this is maybe a slightly complicated graph showing that the, the, the actual odds ratios, this is the, the ratio of good to bad, where yellow is the actual, and the blue line is, 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 the, um, is your estimate. Except at very, very low attack volumes, you get you know, your, 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 your um, your estimate is almost perfect. And in the interest of time, let me just skip the toy example. And conclusions, I mean, what we have here is, it's a very, very simple way to estimate the amount of attack traffic. Just really, it's, it's uh, you know, it's r just fail over login ratios and estimate one, one quantity. That, once you've got it, gives you a very simple way to find the least attack subsets. If you know, if I have a way of estimating, looking at a bucket of data and seeing how much is good and bad, I just keep looking at buckets until I find one where the estimate says it's very, very good. And once I have that, I now have a clean way to, to get the distribution of all the features that I care about, which allows me to just calculate the odds ratio that any given event is malicious. The, the main assumptions here are that the attacker fail rate is high. This is a guessing attacker, so the main thing that I'm hinging on is that good users succeed 90, 95% of the time, something like that. Bad guys who are guessing a password are gonna fail 98, 99, 99.9% .9 of the time. And that the clean distributions are, are somewhat slowly varying. I'm not, I'm explicitly not assuming anything like that an attacker, that attacker strategies persist over long periods of time, or that attackers have a shortage of IP addresses, or, or anything like that. Um, okay, that's it, I'll happy to take it. I, unlike others, will be happy to take a question if there are any. Um, okay. Uh, really cool talk. I just wanted to understand the sensitivity on alpha. Sure. What happens when alpha is really small? Um, you know, intuitively one might guess that um, all these failing events uh, are basically the signal and the noise is the, is the good logins. And do you lose that in your analysis in some sense? No, I, I think the problem, uh, if you go back to the sensitivity analysis, I think the problem is, uh, is when um, alpha is, it, 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 the problem is when one minus alpha over alpha is really small, which yeah, means I, that alpha yeah. is, is, is very big. So it's, what happens there is, um, uh, you know, it, it's actually very, very clean. So, you know, it's, it's, it's less of an issue anywhere. If you have, say, like uh, 10 to the minus one here would be 10% of your attack traffic is, 10% of your attack traffic is bad. 
You know, this is saying that this works well at scale, and it works well where you've got, you know, you've got enough bad traffic that, you know, when you um, allow confidence intervals around your, your estimated distributions, that you've, you, you can, you know, punish that. That the, that the bad traffic is adding at least enough to get you outside the confidence intervals right. around your good. If there's so little attack traffic that you know, you're within the confidence intervals of your estimates of clean, then it really doesn't work. So this works well for things where, yeah, you've got 5% you know, or 10% or you know, in some cases you can have 50% of your traffic. And so empirically, that's true, right? I mean, I empirically, uh, in, in practice, that is the case, is it? That right, right, right. And that's, that's just, yeah, there's nothing unintuitive here. It's okay. kind of yeah. confirming your intuitions, yes. Cool. Hello. Thanks for the talk. Sure. So, Stanislav Mishkovic from Splunk. Sorry I didn't come at the, at the beginning, but uh, you rolled out some of my questions with the uh, uh, limitations that, that you said that, uh, mentioned at the end. So, um, Given that I didn't hear all the, uh, the entire talk, uh, what happens if there are failures? How, how would you see this working if there are failures that are not necessarily due to an attacker or due to a user, the, the, if there is something related to the system? So for example, um, there is some uh, uh, service that is logging in on behalf of the user and the password expires. And the second case, that, that's kind of maybe an offset. And the second case, what if the system has some sort of rate limiting? So, so you fail a couple of times, then it delays you, changes your distributions, or, or it locks you out, right? and, and these things. So, so uh, answering the second of those first, I mean, you know, you should, um, uh, you, you know, I mean, this should be part of a system. If you're, if you're go going to lock out, you should kind of understand that, you know, your, what you're seeing are not raw file. What you're not seeing is the raw, unfiltered stuff from the, um, from the human population. The first question, um, yeah, this is really a way, I mean, essential, the, the essential assumption here is the human traffic, you know, the central limit theorem is your friend, you get nice clean distributions, and then volatility and things where you get high failure rates are certainly due to attackers. But they can also be due to, um, you have to be, you have to be alert for, I, I, you know, a good example is something like poorly configured clients, which will resend the same cache credential over and over. Mm -hmm. It's important that you, you sort of, um, at your server, distinguish between um, um, failure events that are repeated with the same credential as opposed to ones that are not. I mean, th that, that's, that, that requ um, you will detect that traffic as anomalous but you know you can kind of special case it once if that's if that's what's going on if your servers are are repeatedly logging the same event over and over, um, so it, you effectively you are detecting machine generated traffic versus human. If you have one or two good reasons why there is machine generated but non malicious traffic, well then you just special case that out and you know subtract it and re and uh, yes, that's so know. that's one case. But in combination of the two. Uh, so, so if there is uh, this machine generated traffic plus the system reaction, sorry, what? If if there is this machine generated traffic and there is a system reaction which is kind of delaying, locking out and so on, w would we still be robust? I, I mean, I, I would use this, you know, instead of you know thing like how it interacts with nonlinear heuristics, like I'm going to lock or I'm going to exponentially back off. I think it's hard to answer that in general without kind of looking at what particular heuristics that you've, that you've got. M I, I would say n to, use, to not use nonlinear heuristics like exponential back off if you've got a better way of estimating the odds. If you're gonna put two things together, yeah, it's, it's hard to say in general how they're gonna interact unless I know exactly what the other thing is. Okay, thank you. Sure. 